Well, hey folks, this is our Vermil 47, Robert Vermillion, coming to you from Dallas, Texas. Today is March the 14th, 2012. I'm making this video at 1217 Daylight Standard Time, uh, Central Daylight Standard Time. Uh, here's yesterday's M8 flare that uh, came after, of course, I made my video yesterday saying things had quietened down. Well, yeah, things quietened down up until we had the big 8 flare, and it was a long duration 8 flare. It was also what's called a 10 flare. Again, uh, if you're interested in what that is, again, you can Google it, look it up, and it's spelled T E N F L A R E. Uh, and it, it talks more about the, the 10 centimeter range uh, in radio talk, uh, amateur radio talk, or ham radio talk. Uh, but it was a long duration M flare. Now, it did come from uh, our spot that's been bugging us for the last two weeks, and that sunspot area 1429. Uh, so it's about to rotate away out of view, but I guess it just had to give us a, another, you know, last hurrah there. We had another uh, sun uh, uh, solar flare this morning, uh, and it was a M2.8. Now, it didn't come from 1429. It came from a, one of the newer spots on the sun that it's just now rotating into a uh, geo-effective position, and it's uh, coming from spot 1432. So, the sun's definitely not quiet. Not right now. We are in solar maximum, so it shouldn't be. Okay, here's the solar wind prediction that shows uh, the coronal mass ejections and uh, the solar wind speed and density. Um, yesterday's M8 flare pops off right there. Looks like we're going to catch the tail end of it. And again, we catch a tail end curly Q. Sometimes that can be a relatively decent magnetic storm. Um, our our uh, geomagnetic uh, field has been so disrupted for the, the last several days. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how it reacts. It just it may or may not uh, make a big difference or not, but at any rate we will clip the edge and a lot of times as I said we clip the edge and we do that little curly cue at the end and it can uh, whop us pretty good uh, over here we see it probably making it into the area of uh, earth around uh, during the UT day on the 16th into the 17th um, so uh, we'll just have to keep our eye on it as it comes in uh, this down here has been this coronal hole uh, that's very fascinating that's moving into earth facing position I mean I'm going to show you a picture of it here shortly and it's a, it, it's quite an interesting coronal hole I mean it, it, it could throw conspiracy people nut, drive them nuts because it's just odd but anyway again watch out for the clip coming up the 16th into the 17th and then coronal hole will begin to affect us probably later on not too many uh, days maybe 24 hours probably after that okay here's this coronal hole feature that uh, again is just interesting what does it look like it looks like a triangle triangular coronal hole now coronal hole is an area in, in the coronosphere where uh, high energy wind and uh, particles are, are spewed out of the sun. Now, as this gets geo-effective, which it almost is, usually coronal holes, when they affect us, they have to be just a little right of the center of the sun because uh, as the wind blows out, remember the sun is turning this way, so as the wind blows out, it's kind of kind of curves back around to get us, but like I said, th there you go for you <laughs> Illuminati people, um, just the, the pyramid. It's just a, very interesting. I thought it was kind of cool. Anyway, so that's the, and it is a, it's a very large coronal hole. It's a, called, called a trans-equatorial. It covers, goes into both, both uh, hemispheres of the sun. So, again, that one uh, will be affecting the area probably uh, later later on this week uh, close to the weekend as it continues to rotate we'll just keep an eye on it and see if it changes to any kind of shape that might be something different but 
and again, looking at things like this, it's kind of like laying out and looking at clouds. Uh, I know that, you know, you can make anything out of anything, but this is obviously a triangle. It's probably two separate coronal holes, but looks triangular to me. So we'll see what happens. Quite interesting. Here's a look at the uh, magnetogram of the sun. And uh, again, I like to look at it because it's, it helps me decide which spots are, are going to have the tendency to flare up. This is our old friend 1429 that caused the M8 yesterday. Again, it's rotating off the uh, western limb of the sun and uh, the disk. And we, it, we shouldn't be bothered by it anymore again until if, unless it stays together and rotates all the way around and comes back over here. Uh, today's flare, which was uh, again the M2.8, came from this little puppy right here. And you can see, in fact, I think I can, well, I didn't zoom that much, but anyway, uh, it doesn't look all that complex, but we do have some polarities that are close enough together that are splitting different polarities, should I say. Like this white happens to be in the middle of these two black areas. Otherwise, it would be a relatively basic uh, sunspot. This one here is not all that impressive, but again, it could be getting its act together also. So we'll just have to keep an eye on these. Uh, I mean, after what's passed us by with 1429, we just have to wait and see. We still have 1434 down here. It's not done much, uh, and it's really kind of basic. It's uh, barely close enough to spew out any sea flares. So uh, I would say 1432 now is going to be our next one to watch, and even 1433. So these two are going to be our newsmakers on the sun for the next couple of days. Anyway, we'll say bye-bye to 1429 because you did give us some pretty good action. It was some interesting action. It'll be studied for a long time. Quick look at the satellite environment uh, for the past three days. Uh, yesterday's M8 flare from our departing uh, old friend 1429 uh, definitely was a proton f flare. Uh, immediately, proton streamers went up. And so we continue to see those uh, stay elevated. Uh, we are above the S1 storm level now and we'll probably stay that way for the next 12 to 24 hours. Uh, high energy protons are falling off. Now I, I say this, not just barring any like any flares that may come from our new spot that uh, is, is throwing off some, but it didn't seem to uh, fluctuate the proton uh, activity too much so it may not yet be a proton bearing fl proton flare bearing spot just quite yet uh, electron storm continues uh, we've had some pretty good earthquakes too so again I just to correlate those I keep them together keep in one of these days that you know we'll see how 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 the study comes out as to elevated electron storm electrons and earthquakes finally our geomagnetic uh, uh, magnetometer is getting a little rest here check this out we've been green now for a day and a half, two days a day and a half anyway uh, that will change in two days whenever we get hit by the uh, next coronal mass ejection but it's kinda probably taking a, a nice rest and hopefully recharging our shields to get ready for what may come from our next spots and plus the hit on the uh, UT Day 16-17 uh, from the coronal mass ejection from yesterday's M8 flare. Here's a quick look at uh, the day one convective outlook uh, which is valid for today. Uh, there is a slight risk of severe thunderstorms uh, here in the Ohio Valley. Um, the main risk here will be uh, large hail damaging winds. Uh, it's not really a tornado setup, but um, again, severe thunderstorms this time of the year have been, it's, it's been very easy for them to produce tornadoes. So that is going to be uh, an area, again, to watch today. Uh, a lot of uh, green here on the map, and which even comes back to me. It'd be nice. I wouldn't mind having a thunderstorm down here in Dallas. It would be nice. Uh, but a lot of unsettled weather across the central area. 
So if we take a look at the day two outlook, we see that, let me put the cities on here, we see that we've got two areas to deal with. So again, we've got a lot of green, which means a lot of just scattered thunderstorm activity across the whole the eastern half of the United States. Again, southern Great Lakes, probably see some large hail and again, some probably damaging wind. And the same back on the plains, isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. Now, I want to show you something that is always interesting when I see something with, that they forecast so many days out ahead. I don't show you this one that often. This is the day four through eight severe weather outlook. And again, that's really sticking your neck out whenever you're calling for severe thunderstorms that far in advance. Um, this is uh, for day five, which would be Sunday, Sunday and Mon Sunday into Monday. Uh, calling for severe weather uh, to begin here right on the lee of the Rocky, lee side of the Rockies, uh, from Nebraska down into West Texas. Uh, looks like maybe some dry line activity be beginning to start up. We're getting to that time of the year. We're, get we're getting uh, lots of warm, humid air building up over here. We're getting the storms that come across and drag either fronts or dry lines through the area. And I think this is probably going to be the beginning of a few days of maybe some really bad severe weather again, once again, in the the uh, central sections of the United States. Um, it's, it's hard to tell right now. Again, again, a forecast this far out is generally kind of very iffy. But anytime you see one that far out, you know that, that, that the forecasters have picked up on something, some anomaly that's coming through it's going to trigger some stuff and again I'm uh, kind of on board with them and again I'm looking for some potential uh, tornadic weather in the central section of the United States uh, beginning early next week late in the weekend and then early into the next week so uh, I hope I'm wrong because they've had enough tornadoes to last them forever in this area but they're going to see more. It's springtime. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up with that. Again, incoming CME on the 17th uh, could spark some more auroras. Auroras of, aurora watchers have had their fill this year. Uh, we had the uh, M flare this morning. We could expect more M flares and the potential for even an X flare out of the, the new spot that's uh, turning up some stuff. And uh, again, we'll keep an eye on the, the uh, interesting... hole here can't move the thing now it won't let me move it anyway the interesting triangular coronal hole as it crosses anyway i'm robert vermilion from dallas texas r vermil 47 y'all have a good one